this generation likes things. You know, they like uh, to see facilities. Uh, it's a facilities arm race all across college football. And so for us to continue to attract uh, the, the, the quality of student athlete that we need to be successful here at Florida a &M. You know, we need our facilities to match um, our academic reputation. Uh, we need our facilities to match our play on the field so that we can continue to, uh, uh, to attract quality student athletes. And so uh, this locker room renovation uh, is critical for our ongoing success. Um, I think it will definitely position FAMU to be a major power, not only in the black college landscape, but, but FCS football as a whole. Um, and I think it's something that really gives us the ability to attract student athletes to FAMU that maybe we haven't been able to in the past. Up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. The infant of Krypton is now the man of steel. Superman! Who best be in a position to use his amazing powers in a never-ending battle for truth and justice, Superman has assumed the disguise of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Reggie from HBCU Spotlight, and I'm back with another banger. As you can see, 87% of the channel's viewers are not subscribed. So hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you will be alerted anytime that I upload a video. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is the story of yet another trailblazer who is out to bring black colleges back to prominence. This is the story of John Holcomb II. is a 6 foot 4 227 pound quarterback from Humboldt, Texas, where he attended Summer Creek High School. In high school, he was a three-star recruit. In the class of 2018, he was the number 14 ranked dual threat quarterback in the nation and the number 65th best player in Texas. To put that in simpler terms, dual threat means that he can run as well as throw the ball. Also in Texas, high school football is almost as important as breathing, so being ranked that high means that he was pretty good. He started for two years in high school. During his junior year, he was second team all district. He worked that offseason to hone his craft. <laughs> the next year, during his senior year, he was the district's co-offensive MVP. He led Summer Creek to a 7-4 record and threw for 2,369 yards. 22 passing touchdowns, rushed for 551 yards, along with nine touchdowns on the ground. Coming out of high school, his size, athleticism, and throwing ability had scouts doing whatever they could to get Holcomb to sign with their program. He had interest from literally everyone. Alabama, Arizona, Baylor, Georgia Tech, LSU, Ohio State, and Texas A&M, just to name a few. 
While those schools expressed interest, only one of them offered a scholarship. Holcomb had a total of nine offers. The schools included Sam Houston, New Mexico, Incarnate Word, Illinois, Howard, Georgia Tech, Bowling Green, and Kansas State. He ultimately decided to commit to Kansas State. After some research, I found that one of the big things that drew him to sign with the Wildcats was that their quarterback coach, Colin Klan, started for the program from 2011 to 2012 and was the Offensive Player of the Year in the Big 12 as a senior. Holcomb was quoted as saying, being able to play under him, a quarterback coach that has actually played in the Kansas State system, is going to be great. During his first year on campus, he sat out as a redshirt freshman. He began last season, competing with Nick Ast as a backup behind Skylar Thompson. In limited playing time, Holcomb rushed for 71 yards on 13 carries. He also went one for three passing. In a 26-13 loss at Oklahoma State, Holcomb carried the ball twice for nine yards. However, some muffled snaps and miscommunication that resulted in K-State having to burn timeouts led to some frustration from head coach Chris Clemen. I think one of the plays was read wrong on a wristband, Clemens said at a press conference following the game. And one of them, I don't think we had the right personnel out there. And we had miscommunication. Can't happen though. We've got to clean it up. Absolutely can't happen. John issued a heartfelt message to K-State and their fans via Twitter. He said, and I quote, I love each and every one of you dearly, but after careful consideration and many conversations with my family and close friends, it saddens me to say that I'll be entering the transfer portal. You guys are amazing, and I wish my brothers nothing but the best for the rest of the season, and I will be happily cheering them on, but it's time to part ways. I didn't have any real sense he would transfer. K-State quarterbacks coach Colin Klein said following the Holcomb transfer, it came as a surprise. But after sitting down and talking to him, his mind was pretty much made up. I obviously wish him nothing but the best and appreciate all the work he's given me and our program over the last year and a half. I wish him the best. Prior to his transfer, the Wildcats had begun to experiment with Holcomb playing other positions. In the loss to the Cowboys, Holcomb lined up at receiver. The Wildcats also wanted to use his 6'4", 256 pound frame to learn the tight end and flex positions. He gets off the football fast. He can block the point of attack. K-State head coach Chris Kleiman said October 1st, just hours before Holcomb announced his transfer. We put him in at tight end during the week of practice and he's physical. He blocked the point of attack. He wants to just be involved and that's a good thing. Holcomb just didn't want to be involved with the Wildcats in a nine quarterback role any longer. His older brother, Zarian Holcomb, was the tight end at Prairie View, and his younger cousin, Corey Williams, is currently a wide receiver for the Southern University Jags. He ultimately decided to transfer to FAMU. The Rattlers recently lost their record-setting quarterback in Ryan Stanley due to graduation. FAMU, of course, is coming off a 9-2 season in which they had the best record in the MEAC. Stanley was a big reason why, as he set several career marks and won the MEAC Offensive Player of the Year. However, Holcomb will likely have to win the job at FAMU. Rashawn McKay did a solid job backing up Stanley last season. He completed 71% of his passes and threw for just six touchdowns to just two interceptions. It was McKay, not Stanley, who threw the game-winning touchdown against North Carolina A&T. On top of that, yet another quarterback is looking to enter the fold at FAMU. Former USF and Sanford quarterback Chris Oladokun is heading to FAMU and will be eligible to play immediately as a grad transfer. FAMU did not play in 2020. The Rattlers have since moved from the MEAC to the SWAC, and all eyes are on the entire conference. They are getting tons of media coverage, with Coach Prime going to Jackson State. They face off against the Tigers on September 5th in Miami for the Orange Blossom Classic. Jackson State leads the series 10 wins to 7 losses and 2 draws. And I'm sure Holcomb and the rest of the squad are looking to cut into that lead. Holcomb, or whoever the starter is in the fall, will have huge shoes to fill. FAMU's previous quarterback, Ryan Stanley, had an amazing career where he amassed for over 5,000 yards through the air, along with 40 touchdowns and 19 interceptions. This came in only two years of being a starter. I'm super excited to see who will win the job and also to watch FAMU in the SWAC. HBCU football is back, baby. Thanks for watching the video. If you made it to the end, type in keep your head up in the comment section. Let's keep growing and supporting the historically black colleges that we all love. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe, leave a like, and a comment. We on the road to 10K. From us, over here at HBCU Spotlight, we're rooting for you, Holcomb, and looking forward to seeing you shine on the field.
We out of here. Peace. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh my god! Oh.